showed you how I rebuilt the clutch master cylinder. So now that I'm rebuilding the one for the brakes, I'm not gonna show you all the details because they're basically the same. Uh, in fact, uh, for this year and this uh, model, the cylinders for the brakes and the clutch are identical. So I'm not gonna show you exactly everything in details, but I'm gonna show you what happened at the end when I was uh, mounting the master cylinder for the brakes. So I mounted the cylinder, absolutely no problems, nice and easy. And uh, I was wondering though why it wasn't uh, mounted when I bought the car. Both cylinders were in the trunk and uh, obviously somebody had some issues with them and tried to fix them. So uh, the one for the clutch I used already, if you remember I drove the car before I took it apart. So I know that with it uh, there was absolutely no problem, but with the brakes this is uh, the first time the master cylinder goes on its place. And uh, now I realize what was the issue with it. When I tried to fit this line, uh, the brake line, uh, it wasn't going anywhere. Okay, so I didn't pay attention before and it appears that this fitting here is all damaged and I can't really tighten it over there. Plus, what I noticed also, this is a double flare and for, especially for the cylinder here, for the master cylinder, it needs to be single flare like that like a bubble flare also they call it. So I went to Canadian Tire and bought these fittings and now I'm gonna have to cut my pipe and uh, put one of these fittings there and just uh, flare it. Otherwise they fit perfectly here. I spent uh, half an hour maybe on the computer to, f to figure out what's the thread and everything for this so if somebody doesn't know, this is uh, the brake line is 3 16 uh, and the uh, thread on the fitting is 3 8 24. 24 is the step. So I found this out the hard way. I hope that helps for you. Okay, I bought the shortest line possible for the price because I don't need a long line, I just needed the fittings. I had to cut the new line in order to take out the fitting and then I cut also my existing line, remove the old fitting, put the new one and then I flared it. Single flare is done by using this attachment here and if you need double flare you just need to remove the attachment after and do it one more time with the cone only without the attachment which gives you exactly the negative shape of the single flare. Next I mounted the bottom end of the line on that four way connector and then when I was mounting the top end I started hearing some weird clicking noise without applying any pressure to the fitting and all of a sudden it became extremely loose and then I realized that I cracked it. I started loosening it and <laughs> there was no point of loosening it, I just pulled it out and it came out like, see, weird.
<laughs> this is the first time I see such thing. Wow. Anyway, garbage. Okay, so I have this cylinder here, which my boss gave me, Jake. Uh, but it's a little bit different than these ones. This one is on 90 degrees, uh, these ones are a little bit uh, on an angle. So if I mount this like the other ones, it's going to be sitting on a weird angle. So I don't think it is going to work, but maybe just temporarily until I... Uh, get a new one because it's gonna take time now when I order it so I just uh, I'm gonna order it and I think I'm gonna try to rebuild this one and put it there temporarily so I can test drive the car because this time I want to test drive it with brakes and everything so I can see if anything's wrong or not because last time I just drove it for what 50 meters this time I want to drive it more and be able to to see if there is any problem with the clutch, with everything. So for that I need proper brakes and I'm gonna use this cylinder to do that. Alright, it cleaned up nicely. I wanted to clean it up, I didn't want to put it on the car in the condition it was because even though it's temporarily, I don't want to put uh, dirty parts, but anyways. I couldn't change, I couldn't take the piston out for some reason, but uh, it moves in and out very well. So I'm guessing it's uh, good enough to, to use temporarily. And yeah, thanks to Jake, I'm gonna be able to test drive my car. And by the way, I don't know if I said that, but uh, everything that uh, I'm using here, all the equipment, the shop, that's Jake's and uh, I'm really thankful that uh, he let me use it as mine because uh, that was the only way for this project to be possible otherwise I didn't have any room or equipment to use so thanks to Jake I am able to do that okay, this worked before I hope it's gonna work again I would say impossible I might be able to trick it <laughs> That was a fluke If I didn't have the of pliers close to me I wouldn't even think about it but it worked <laughs> okay so now I know for next time what I'm using okay attempt number two even though I didn't force it the last time. Now the level is going to be a little bit lower because I'm going to have to fill it up to, to this mark only. I think that's going to be fine as a temporary solution. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to open one by one all of the uh, bleeders on the four wheels and I'll wait until the fluid comes because now the system is empty so I'm gonna wait until the fluid comes and then I'm gonna close it and then I'm gonna try to do another trick which uh, Carlos told me about 
about bleeding the system without uh, an assistant. And it makes sense, no? He says that if uh, you leave the uh, hose hanging in the brake fluid and then you keep pumping on the pedal, eventually the air is going to come out. But when you release the pedal, it's not going to suck air anymore because it's going to be dipped in the fluid. So it makes sense. But first of all, I'm going to open all of them one by one and wait for fluid to come. Air started coming right away. I'm gonna open it a little bit more. Okay, I have to make sure it's always always topped up. And the last wheel. Well, it doesn't sound very good, huh? Last wheel. Okay, I think that this wheel is done. We'll move back to the other rear wheel. Okay, because I don't see anything on this wheel, I'm gonna keep doing like three, four times. I'm gonna empty the master cylinder by pumping on the pedal, and then I'm gonna uh, fill it up again with this brake fluid and I'm gonna do that three four times to make sure that uh, There's no more air because I'm not gonna be able to see unless you tell me huh? Was there air coming? You don't know, right? You, didn't, you don't want to tell me. Anyways, I'm going to do it again. One more time, just in case, and then I'm gonna move to the front wheels. And that's enough for the for this wheel. Okay, we are at the front right wheel now. Last one. Okay, that was it. I think there's no more air. Well, we'll check later when we start the engine. Okay, right away it started leaking from over there and uh, I think because there's an adapter over there which makes it from uh, single flare to double flare and it wasn't very good so I'm gonna just remove that and I'm gonna do a single flare on my 
line so I won't need the adapter anymore so well unfortunately I'm gonna have to repeat the bleeding after that again <laughs> okay so I took out the line and you see this is what I'm talking about this adapter here is too short at the bottom so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna avoid this adapter and I'm gonna use single flare on my brake line I just realized that I forgot to hit the recording button so what I did was uh, I had this nut on the line and on the line I had the uh, double flare double flare was going through this bubble flare and it was going like that on the line and then this line was going into the four-way connector but obviously this uh, the threads were too short because uh, it was tightened all the way into this to the end of the threads and probably it needed to be longer so in order to seal nicely so now what I did I removed this this adapter and the nut I cut the end of the line I put this fitting there now and I made a bubble flare and now what I have is exactly the same thing as this adapter but this time I have much longer threads and in this case uh, I'm gonna tighten it more and hopefully this time it's gonna seal so now I'm gonna mount the line again I'm gonna fill up with brake fluid and I'll have to repeat the whole process again the whole process of uh, bleeding the system Okay, all the, the process is done again, the brakes are bled, I'm surprised I was able to bleed them all by myself, but that was thanks to Carlos and his trick, and now this four-way connector is completely dry, let me give you some light there, so I hope it stays that way, but I'm gonna check it tomorrow again, and I don't see any other leaks anywhere, there's one more two-way, uh, three-way connector over here so it's completely dry too and all other joints and everywhere it's completely dry so I'm gonna keep checking it in the next few days but I believe that the brakes are complete now so the next thing is to start the engine and drive the car this time with brakes. <laughs> Can't wait for this moment. <laughs> 